Thank you. Um, let's go then. Good morning. It's really nice to be here and having the opportunity to talk a bit about the museum and some of its main challenges regarding the present moment. I would like to thank everyone from this institution, this, the working force of this museum, with a special attention to the former director, Marion Ackerman, and the Jainto Peter Schuller. Thanks a lot for this invitation. I would like to offer today a brief presentation on some Brazilian experience concerning its museological and educational institutions, experiences coming from the country recent past. As we know, the past is always present, and the question is how to observe what was left behind, the whys and hows, understanding what should be brought back to light. Sometimes, an old narrative could be seen as a new strategy, or at least, as a cautionary tale on the dangers of the future. So, the fairy tale of ours begins in Bahia, a state in the northeast of Brazil in 1950. This was the year of the first park school, built in the city of Salvador, the capital, by the mind and the energy of the Brazilian educator Anísio Teixeira. So much could be said about this project, whose the major goal was to establish a new program to the public schools in the country. The student should be part of a community, being at the same time a student in class, a worker in workshops, a citizen in social interaction, a sport person in the gym, and an artist in the theater and other artistic activities. The school should be a place for full socialization, putting in check any form of authoritarianism. The school, as said by Anísio Teixeira, should be a machine to produce democracy. From this short description, let's take three ideas that could help us in the journey from there to here the program, the theater, and the machine to produce democracy. And how about the museum? The museum comes now. The Museum of Modern Art of Bahia was inaugurated in 1959, born from the desire of the politicians in power, in a process guided by the Italian-born Brazilian architect Lina Bobardi. The idea of a new museum has been part of her imagination since the beginning of Lina's life in Brazil, where she arrives in 1946, along Pietro Maria Bardi, the husband. Pietro had a genius of his own, a refined art critic, a businessman, and also an energetic mind willing to reinvent the museum as an institution. Pietro e Lina created the Art Museum of São Paulo, MASP, in the main industrial city of Brazil in 1947. Due to many reasons, crazy and funny ones, let's say, the museum had and has a collection that can still excite our dreams. Italian Renaissance, Rembrandt, Van Gogh, Cézanne, Renoir, El Greco, all the major usual suspects of the art history. But for Pietro, as important as the collection was the program. The museum should be, from the beginning, an anti-museum. In Pietro's words, I believe that time has come to reform the museums, to remake it, so they serve the people guiding the formation of the taste to place the audience before the premises of their own life, and from there to draw vital energies useful for the future. Pietro wanted just that. There is no time here to develop on the anti-museum project, but maybe Le Corbusier, the architect, could give you an idea. 
Talking in London during the International Symposium for Modern Architecture in 1951, Le Corbusier presents the Anti-Museum of Lina and Pietro Bardi as an example of how a museum should be. I quote Le Corbusier, the new museum still needs to be created. A museum able to have everything, offering any kind of knowledge. A democratic one, where the audience could choose, accept, or reject. Finally, an honest museum. Now, back to Bahia. Melina Bobard arrives after a financial crisis faced at the museum in Sao Paulo followed by her professional and conjugal conflict with Pietro. She has a lot of doubts, but also a program in mind for the Museum of Modern Art of Bahia. Lina was interested in the Park School project since the beginning. In the Habitat magazine, published by Maspi, and having Lina as the editor in its four issue, 1951, we found already an article on the school created by Anisio Teixeira. In Bahia, in 1959, the idea of an anti-museum starts to expand itself and so the program. Now, no more or only the anti-museum, but the museum is cool, place it also as a machine to produce democracy. Maybe it could be interesting to detain ourselves in the meaning of this concept program in this context. Nowadays, the program and its meaning seem to be lost somewhere. The majority of museums have educational programs, exhibition ones, and so and so, where we have instead of an institutional program, what has been built for inside to outside, so to speak, just a calendar of activities. But here, the program is something else, much more bold and ambitious. Every activity should be coherent with the program, the intellectual and practical how-to established by the institution. Its mission, as you can see. And the first lines, the original program of the Museum in Bahia says this. This place of ours is not a museum. The concept is not right. The museum preserves and our gallery do not exist. This one of ours should be called center, movement, school. And the future collection well worked according to a didactic and no occasional criteria should be called permanent collection. It is in this direction we should use the word museum. Regarding this idea, a museum school and its meaning, Lina still has some points to be addressed. Now I quote Lina again. To build a museum, we should ask a number of questions, such as Aristotelic categories. What should be taught here today? Who today do you should teach? Why do you need to teach? how it's necessary to teach. Where do you need to teach? After these questions, the Museum of Modern Art of Bahia comes to life. Taking a modernist building, destroyed by fire one day after its inauguration as its venue. The place was a theater, and among the first moments of the program, she decides having the critic Martin Gonçalves as the fellow in arms, working with Beto Brecht in Albert Camus place along the exhibitions as a political statement. The Museum of Modern Art in Bahia, this museum school, fought its end in 1964 after the military coup in the country. Lina Bobard leaves Bahia with hard feelings regarding the lack of support from the local artistic community and the politicians. The museum and its program, under the spell of Anizu Teixeira and his park school, the machine to produce democracy, was dead and gone. 
But instead of crying for this tragic moment, let's return to this school. One of the followers of Anísio Teixeira was another Brazilian educator, then, then young Paulo Freire. The park school was a kind of ideal public school for a society in permanent change in search of its own identity when facing ideological and hegemonic discourse. Even if the idea was to build an educational system to the country, each of these schools should be independent of a central power in order to be able to develop itself among the context needs and desires of the community where the school was placed. But Paulo Freire, after some years, starts to develop a more radical idea. The school should be free of itself, happening everywhere, for everyone, in a museum, for instance. The question is which methodology should we apply because education has always a political meaning. In 1968, he published his most famous work concerning this idea, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. So, in this rondo of ours, we have this curious development, the anti-museum, the park school, the museum school, and the anti-school of Paulo Freire. What is still missing in this, in the place for the, is the place for the theater in this narrative as part of this Brazilian puzzle regarding the invention of the school and the museum as machines to produce democracy. An anti-theater? The theater museum or the theater school? No. The legislative theater and the invisible theater as explained by Augusto Boal, who after Freire has created his theater of the oppressed in the ninth seventh. Once again, the issue was how to escape from its own territory, or take a more gracious image, how to overflow its own territory. Moreover, this overflowing thinking was also one of the main subjects for the anti-museum and the museum school. How to make exhibitions and display objects in the space, avoiding the always dubious art history, especially when observed from a non-Western perspective. In most cases, for Lina, a certain anthropological and ethnographical gaze was the answer. But once again, a different anthropology, just like the one by the French writer and ethnographer Michel Lehy, part true, part fiction, part psychological fantasies, part surrealism. The invisible theater was defined by Boal as a play that masquerades itself as a reality, performed in a public space. The goal is to unsettle passive social relations and spark critical dialogue among the spec actors. So we don't have spectators anymore. We have spec actors who never learn that they are part of a play. Boal. The actor became the spectator of the spectator who had become an actor. So the fiction and reality were overlapping. The legislative theater is different. It doesn't masquerade itself. Boal explains, theater is not enough to change reality. We all agree. Legislative theater is the utilization of all forms of the theater of the oppressed with the aim of transforming the citizens' legitimate desires into laws. For Boal, the theater, and by the way, the school for Anísio Teixeira or the museum for Pietro e Lina Bardi should be just like a martial art, like judo or karate not for to be just watch it, should not be a divertimento in a passive way, 
but something to be learned and used in a war, in any political and cultural battle. All those precious pieces, from Park School to Boal, passing through the anti-museum and the place for an educational gesture, was part of the Museum of Modern Art of Bahia program established in 2012 in Salvador. All the images you have watched until now during this talk in such chaotic way belongs to the process experienced by the institution during its recent past. After its original program established by the founders of the institution, the Museum in Bahia had an imbalanced and disturbing narrative. As a public institution, different directors and administrations trying to place the museum in a certain direction. In the majority of cases, the museum was understood as poor, weak, or suffering from arrested development when compared to what the national and international art system has to offer. Basically, the original program was a problem and not a solution. The institution should be a museum, a regular one, and not an anti-museum or a museum school born from the local context, at least not anymore. During the first left party government in Bahia, after more than 40 years, something changed and the museum starts to be seen in a different light. From two, two, 2007 to 2011, under the tenure of two distinct directors, Solange Farkas and Stella Carroso, the museum found its stability, organizing the team and its structure. In 2012, a new administration arrives at the museum with the mission to go one institutional step ahead. The mission was to articulate and implement a new and clear program to the institution. This is the part of the history in which I'm personally involved. I became the director then. Once again, the program. The museum had its exhibitions and educational activities as well organized, but not a proper program to guide and strengthen its actions. So what could be? The new directorship has decided to research the institution itself, trying to reclaim the original program. Once again, the museum should be a museum in school, but which kind of museum in school and how doing it? The first decision was to propose an initial research from the museum archives. Due to this troubled history, the archive wasn't organized. No one take care of it in 50 years. In some way, it's been almost the materialization of a lost memory. In the archive, we found letters, never published essays, among the other documents concerning the bird of the museum, written by Lina Bo and her contemporaries. From 2012 to 2015, the program was created, having as a result a 84-page document describing the museum as a particular system justifying the institutional decisions taken in the artistic, educational, and scientific field. To summarize this document will be impossible, but we can try to look at some guidelines. The program should not promote a reenactment of the first program, but be an entire new flower born from the same tree. The museum should resignify the meaning of the following structures to itself collection, archive, exhibition, education, and theater, having the invisible theater as a tool for the exhibition venue in the educational process. As a consequence, the museum starts to understand the place and the community as its archive, space, and collection. The museum should abolish the educational sector of the institution as such being able to offer a continued educational experience as a whole. No more distance of power between the artistic research, the educational gesture, and the exhibition room. The museum should dematerialize itself, working in different spaces and seats of state of Bahia. 
the museum should understand its working force as its first audience, and the decisions taken by the director should be present and discussed with the workers, with no hierarchy. The division between the exhibition venue and the working space should be abolished, promoting an endless workshop experience. The museum should not sacrifice its budget in follow rules about how to make an exhibition. The institution should work with the local economic, social, and cultural context, and from there build an international dialogue. It should be an honest museum. The museum should be a counter discourse regarding the hegemonic discourse about the museum and its meaning. The museum should learn again, and only so could the museum school be alive again. The institution should create a magazine to document its learning process and the research done, among other publications. In 2015, during the process of another political purge in Brazil, in Brazil political life, the museum school and its program finds a second end. For the new forces in power, the museum should be part of the tourism trade divertimento, nothing more. The museum team was dismantled. Some of the former workers went to Deep Bahia to found a museum in the nature, the Museu do Mato trying to carry on the program from the Museum of Modern Art. Others left the country, curious to observe how this tropical and delicate flower could survive in a different climate and environment. It will be, of course, a new flower nourished by particular conditions, but it could be still a flower from the same tree. Thanks a lot. Thank mm -hmm. you.